Hi, and welcome to today's data overview of Rome High School. This presentation is taking place in November of 2017, and it's for all the stakeholders of Rome High School, 9th through 12th grade. Today, our presentation will be focusing on Algebra 1 and the EOC milestone scores, but we'll also be looking at some demographics from students of or throughout 9th and 12th grades. The purpose of the data overview presentation is to share data analysis results in an effort to create an awareness of student demographics and student achievement strengths and weaknesses at Rome High School. Today's objectives are to increase dialogue about data at Rome High School, to determine patterns in data, to identify strengths and weaknesses of Rome High School, and to find ways to improve Rome High. This slide talks a little bit about the College and Career Ready Performance Index, or CCRPI. Uh, Rome High School CCRP, CCRPI scores over the past three years have indicated that really we've remained the same. There hasn't been a whole lot of fluctuation in the scores, but when you compare the scores to our state average and our district average, you can see first off that our district average is way below our school's average, which means we're we're actually doing a lot better than the other schools in our uh, district. But you have to keep in mind, too, that those other schools are elementary schools and middle schools, and their performance scores are graded a little bit differently than how ours are. As far as the state average, though, you can see that in 2015 and 2016 that we were well above the state average, but in 2017 we dipped slightly below the state average and that was a lot due to the different principles that we've had over the past two years and just some some of the changes in teachers and retirements that's happened in that time our ccrp ccrpi scores for our school are actually really decent for a good school but here at rome high school we want to be a great school so to become a great school we've got to work to improve those scores so that we can achieve greatness with our students Looking over our demographic profile, here at Rome High School, we uh, know that this school is a Title I school that's located in the heart of Northwest Georgia in Rome, Georgia. Rome High School serves approximately 1,800 students in grades 9 through 12. Every student enrolled at Rome High School receives free and reduced lunch due to the vast number of students that qualify for those lunches. And Rome High School also is a diverse has a diverse student population consisting of 34% Caucasian, 30% African American, 29% Hispanic, 4% multiracial, and 3% Asian. In terms of programs and services, Rome High School has 12.2% 12, 12 of its students qualifying for gifted, gifted services, 7% receiving special education services, and 5.7% are English language learners. The enrollment data for Rome High School is broken up into several different groups. And what I've did is I've broken it up into enrollment by gender and enrollment by other subgroups. For enrollment by gender, I've indicated that we have male and female subgroups. And in those subgroups, it says that gender enrollment has fluctuated over the past three years, but the data has leveled itself off during those three years. In the enrollment for the other subgroups, which are indicated by limited English proficiency, free and reduced lunch, and students with disabilities, we've identified that there's not any migrant data available, but the highest number of students, it says the highest number of students fall in the free and reduced lunch categories. And we'll look at those tables here in a second. But I also broke the data up into two more areas, which is by race and ethnicity and also just looking at fall enrollment numbers. Now, in the race and ethnicity area, we talk a little bit about white, black, Hispanic, Asian, and mixed subgroups, and each of those main subgroups uh, started to level out the more and more we go in our, uh, from since 2015 to 2016, 2017, and they've actually become more equal. Uh, Asian and mixed subgroups actually stay consistent because there's not a whole lot of change in those numbers because the numbers are so low for us. As far as the fall enrollment numbers, students grades 9 through 12 
we see that the number of students enrolling at school has actually increased or gradually increased over the past three years. And like I said, that can be indicated by the table. So when you look at our different, uh, when you look at the different tables here, you can see how this information falls. For the enrollment by gender, you can see how in 2014 female was higher than male, but then in 2015 it switched and male was higher than female. But now in, in 2016, going into 2017, we see that the data indicates that they are equivalent. As far as the subgroups go, we can also see this trend where we said that the free and reduced lunch are much higher than any of the other subgroups. The next high subgroup by enrollment would be students with disabilities, and then we also have limited English proficiency students, or our ELLs. Once again, there was no migrant data, so we couldn't uh, track those students and tell uh, where they were coming in from. Over in the race or ethnicity enrollment section, we can see that by subgroup, we have white being our highest subgroup, followed by black and Hispanic, and then you notice with Asian and multiracial, they're both pretty much so the same. With the Hispanics, we're noticing a gradual increase in our area as where black is actually decreasing and so is white. So like we said, over the next few years, we expect the trend of Hispanic students to continue to gradually increase. As far as fall enrollment data by grade, we can see that the ninth grade students have gradually increased over the past three years and we expect those to continue to increase. Same thing with 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. Our, student, our students uh, just in the past few years here at Rome High School has actually increased every year that I've been here. So I expect that trend to continue and I expect our school to grow in that regard. As far as the graduation and dropout rate, the graduation rate of Rome High School has been the highest, uh, highest it has ever peaked in the recent years. All subgroups have increased in the past three years but the only exception is the Asian subgroup because of the limited number of students. And the dropout rate has diminished over the past three years, which has strongly affected the black and Hispanic subgroups. If you look at these two tables, these two tables indicate what I just said, talking about the graduation rate by ethnicity and then also talking about the dropout rate by race and ethnicity. You can see that in the graduation rates that the Asian population has performed 100% graduation rate the past two uh past uh, two years there's been students in that area the black uh, black subgroup has also went up or increased as well as the Hispanic and the white and then if you notice we don't even have anybody to relate uh, anybody in the dropout rate that's in 2016 so the rate of students that are dropping out has actually diminished at our school over the past three years Attendance has been an issue at Rome High School over the past few years. The number of students with five or fewer days of absences has actually decreased since 2014. However, the 6 to, 6 to 15 day absent and 15 or more day absent categories have actually increased. So I think a lot of the fluctuation here and a lot of things we have been able to identify is that those students who were missing fewer five or fewer days have actually jumped into those other categories causing that spike and that decrease in the number of uh, five days or fewer and you can see by the table how the percentages work out when you look at the percentage of students we can see that a majority or the five days or fewer that obviously those values have decreased the 2014 was at a peak and then 2015 dropped off and then it slightly rose again in 2016. But then when you look at the other data, everything indicates increases. So with number of students in 2014 was 16 or six to 15 days absence, that value actually increased in 2015 and then decreased slightly in 2016. And we see the same trend occurring with more than 15 days of absence. Teachers at Rome High School, I've split those into gender, race and ethnicity, certificate level and years of experience when you look at the gender level i said that teachers at rome high school have primarily been female over the past three years there's been very little change in those numbers and they actually look almost identical when we look at the graphs though as far as race and ethnicity rome high school is primarily made up of white teachers but data shows that administration is looking to hire more diverse uh, teachers, meaning that they are looking to hire more black and Hispanic subgroups. And that's trended up actually the last three years. 
Certificate levels, we noticed that there's a huge increase in teachers from last year at Rome High School. And the master's degrees, specialist degrees, all those, uh, uh, actually the master's degrees have increased, but uh, specialist degrees have decreased. And then years of experience, it says the data indicated Rome High School is uh, looks for highly experienced teachers. Um, looking over some of the data, you can see the results that we just indicated and talked about and how gender is affected as well as the certificate level, the Rome High School's teachers by race and ethnicity as well as years of experience. Now looking at some of the student achievement data, we'll actually be focusing on how Algebra 1 and Coordinate Algebra uh, worked during these past few years. A uh, couple key things to remember though is that in 2014 the state of Georgia transitioned the curriculum from Coordinate Algebra to Algebra 1, so there's not really any data we can look at um, back before 2014 that relates to Algebra 1, but there was the past few years that we've had uh, data to look back on. So that's what we'll focus on and look at those curric how curriculum has changed uh, during, those, during that time, but we'll also look at a few different ways we can analyze this data to see what differences have occurred over that time. So looking at the Rome High School data for Algebra 1 in 2014, the number of students that took the test was 467. And if you look here, you can see that we had a large number. Our largest percentage would have been in the developing area, while beginning was at 29.1%. And then we also had proficient being at 29.8. But then the smallest subgroup was distinguished, which is the highest level. So here, the majority of our students are going to rank in the developing area. And we'll look more at that, how it compares to the state average here in a second. The next year at 2015, we had 438 students take the test, and you can see some very close similarities. The only big difference here is that we had more distinguished learners, which was in the 16%, so it grew a lot that year. Uh, we then had in proficient 31%, distinct, uh, developing was still our largest group with 36%, and then our uh, beginning learners was at 16.9%. The following year of 2016, we had 414 students take the test, and in that we noticed that our distinguished learners fell again, so we noticed a little bit of a decrease in those. Our proficient learners stayed pretty much so the same with 26%. Once again, developing was the large percentage at 35, but then we noticed that the beginning learners increased here, and we noticed that some of those changes had to do with our changes in population because we had a lot of more or a lot more ELLs come in the past couple of years but a lot a lot of uh, different students there affected that average causing the beginning to grow when you compare these scores to the state averages in 2015 and 2016 you'll notice that actually our averages fall pretty close in line with what happened in 2015 as well as 2016. So as far as we go with the state we're actually on track with the state having the same averages or just right at the same averages. Some of them are actually above performing with the state because in 2017 we noticed that 34 percent of our learners were developing. So once again, that developing area is a huge area for both the state and our high school. But then we notice our second highest being the pro uh, proficient and then the distinguished learners were a lower percentage as well. So by looking at the data, we can tell that there's a huge number of students performing at the developing level. So what we can do to improve this area by, or we, uh, we can improve this area by increasing the focus of professional or personalized learning for students and then break down test data to help students master the standards. We can also look to increase the percentage of students at or above proficiency according to our school improvement goal plan. So some next steps of action are to continue teaching our students to encourage personalized learning to, to be implemented into our classroom. We also want to increase the number of students performing as developing, uh, developing to proficient. So we want to try and increase those numbers and push those students that are developing in that big subgroup to proficient to help increase our scores, uh, scores in our, in our, uh, EOC milestones. We also want to focus to increase our scores on the EOC milestones by 3% since that's what's indicated in our school improvement, uh, school improvement plan and that's the primary goal for our math department.